Welcome back everybody. Um, before we move forward, I just got to say thank you very much to all the new subscribers. Uh, we're now up to 700, never in a million years did I think we would get anywhere near this. And also to those that have made kind, kind comments about, uh, in effect, the content or the quality of the videos. Uh, again, I didn't think uh, I'd get that. There's a few negative comments from one or two, but by the by, it doesn't really matter. It's just good that uh, what we're doing here at DIY Audio Implementers is uh, what people are after, because there's uh, lots of videos that produce a finished article, but they don't go into too much detail. Um, Obviously, it's all about sales. They need to sell something. Uh, I, at this stage, uh, I don't need to sell anything. Uh, but there may come a point where I might have to enter into Patreon or a donation to the channel. Because uh, these things cost quite a bit of money uh, to do. Not just the cost of the, the, the components, but actually time. It takes hours and hours to do this. Anyway... By the by, thank you very much again to all those subscribers. And in this video, we're going to build up a Hypex D-Class amplifier. Now, I did an earlier, in one of my earlier videos, we covered the 180, the early ST, 180 ST. Uh, and I've been reliably informed that they've moved on a touch since then uh, with this front end regulation. So we've gone down the, this channel. We're going to do a stereo UCD 400 with the matching power supply and the connection kit that should make it relatively simple. Uh, a no soldering solution. Uh, in effect, you just bolt it together, wire it up, just like the previous video, the 180ST. Uh, and I'm also going to incorporate uh, the superb, uh, the weight of them is very good, uh, the Hypex 4mm banana plugs. Now I've, over the years I've used probably hundreds of these in diff from different manufacturers. But these do seem to be uh, in a different league. The quality of them, the weight, I think they're brass throughout. They're not brass plated, so they're not conductive. Um, big bonus I believe and I think they're a, a, a 20 mil spacing or something like that uh, are they yeah it's near down 20 mil spacing uh, and a good quality product and uh, there's some adjustability I believe in their latching mechanism which is on this sheet uh, <clears throat> for use for my banana plugs or bare wire if your optional spacer allows for adjustment every 30 or 45 degrees so you can ping it round so you can come in this angle this angle uh, via these these bits these bits that stick up you can turn that round at 30 or, or 45 degrees as a pull and twist jobby but we'll cover that later so that's our uh, banana plug sorted. Now the whole object to this is uh, this first stereo amp build of the UCD 400 and all this was supplied by KJF Audio, Stefan here in the UK. Thank you very much Stefan for your swift postal service and your help along the way. Uh, I didn't stretch to the um, end course uh, again, I've got to repeat, this is the D-types are a little bit sort of new to me, but uh, as I said, because of the 180, I wanted to move on to something more substantial and modern. Uh, so this is a UCD 400. This is the first time I've actually ever seen one. I think there are various videos out there on YouTube that you can glean some information. Uh, there's features, cooling, one thing or another. Please read this data sheet before doing anything. 
all the specifications uh, you can power it by uh, a normal transformer rectifier bit of smoothing straight into these supplies if you want <coughs> and here's the the high performance voltage regs that goes on the front end supplies the preamp to the, the device some information there I think they run on uh, what voltage input voltage so they onboard regs regs it down to 15 volts quite a nice ripple rejection we won't go in that comes with some spade connectors a bit of, bit of fluff that nobody can eat and poisons a planet but there you go and the unit itself substantially larger than the the 180 ST and uh, the front end regulation that I was talking about are these two here and a standard D-class setup plus and minus volts in loudspeaker plus loudspeaker minus and we've got a ground so we can run them in balance mode a bit of jiggery pokery here there's some uh, comments on DIY audio uh, that suggests changing the output capacitors is a good idea I'm not going to in this case I'm going to use it straight from the packet uh, very nice mounting so that's one of the modules obviously I've got two power amp modules 400 watts how you get 400 watts it's astonishing uh, with very little heat but you do have to apply some heat sinking they're suggesting uh, power supply it's a standard Hypex I think it's a 40 440 so it'll run two of these this will run two of these uh, with the appropriate wiring kit uh, I think we've seen one of these before in a previous video it's a standard Hypex switch mode power supply so yeah there it is there's a standard Hypex power supply we're going to be using along with again the Hypex connection kit uh, I'll just get it out for those that, that didn't see, oh, sorry, that, ha that haven't seen the previous video of the 180 build. It's exactly the same kit. Uh, I'm still astonished at the quality of this. These XLR connectors, it's a very good bit of kit, this. Obviously, specialist. Uh, specialised for this application and you've got all the cabling you need to connect up to two of these modules so we just defunct all that decant all that <clears throat> so it comes down to what am I going to put it in the, this project uh, is all about uh, a power amplifier in effect I'm going to end up with six six amplifiers modules in one case I might just have to move you back a bit you with me now I did a build video on this and all six are going to be installed on into this hopefully Moving on from the um, first part of this video, uh, reference this NC, uh, UCD 400 D class amplifier Hypex. I was going to put it in one of the big cases, the um, Hi Fi 2000 uh, 2U, uh, but I wanted to save that case for a more 
appropriate project. I was going to put six of these in one of those large cases, but I just wanted to clarify in my own head that this is worth doing. Um, bearing in mind this, the two, the two modules, the cable adapter kit uh, and the power supply, I think something like about £400 in this plus the case, um, IEC socket, <coughs> a little bit of wiring. Uh, and I've used it with the Trio, which is another video if you haven't seen it, the um, PAP clone Trio. Uh, and allegedly this is supposed to be very, very good. Uh, I, I'm going to say um, it's okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to expand on that. I said this in the previous video in the Trio 3, Trio Part 2, I think. I said that, um, I'll use this, and there is a, a sound bite uh, using this. It's very good, but it's not for me. That's what I'm going to say. It's not for me. Um, it's very good in a, I'm going to say, uh, medium-sized box speaker. Um, uh, as long as they're not too revealing. Uh, but anyway, by the by, uh, so I decided to use my shoebox type case. And I made up, as you can see, some L brackets, some aluminium L brackets, which are bolted down to this chassis. Uh, and just wired it up as per manufacturer's instructions. So this input is to these speaker terminals, this input is to these speaker terminals and the whole thing is screwed down via countersunk screws and this just slides, I think it's this way round there is a specific way this goes round, I'll see in a second the whole thing just slides in neat and tidy like that, let's have a look Yep, it's fine. Sorry, this is wobbling all over the place. And these are just screwed in. Like that. And you end up with a shoebox size amplifier does a job uh, these two m4s were used in another application there was two transformers in here for another different power supply uh, i've just left them in for now uh, they don't serve any purpose whatsoever and again this this is um uh, vinyl that they use in the auto industry sticky back plaster i call it but it's not really it's vinyl it's a texture of vinyl very hard wear and this is 20 years old um, and it wears very well for a DIYer if you don't want to go down that spraying and all that type of thing uh, it's very resilient and it does a nice job on the back got earth to ground there and that earth goes to there to the chassis and it's bolted through all all safe and lovely uh, so that's just a quick final to this uh, UCD 400 it started off it's going to be a much bigger in a much bigger case using six of them but that's DIY and I've decided not to use them uh, in this application uh, they're very good on the bottom end uh, anything I'm going to say below 400 Hertz anything above that uh, they're not for me uh, I understand why people use them uh, in the application uh, as a sub driver to use you know drive a sub you can get huge amounts of power and control so this is just a quickie uh, thanks to all the new subscribers uh, thanks for your thumbs up 
Uh, and we've got some more speaker bills coming up as a, a taster. We have an all British um, three way uh, coaxial open baffle on building uh, using Bishop Sound drive units uh, on an open baffle, just a piece of ply, um, simple. Uh, I haven't worked a crossover out yet. I'm going to do it passively and actively just to see, just as an experiment. But it's going to be a British British build for those um, that have an interest in that. So thanks a lot for watching. Keep safe, keep well. See you again soon with the next video.